they're terrified of renewables because renewables um, are way harder to control with just a few small players, right? I mean, the thing the thing about renewables is not that it necessarily has to be in public hands. Um, it lends itself to decentralized forms of ownership and diverse forms of ownership, like municipal ownership, um, a commons approach, energy cooperatives. The inputs are everywhere. The sun and the wind are everywhere. Um, and, and that makes it a very different kind of energy source than fossil fuels, which are only in particular places, and it costs a lot of money to dig them up, it costs a lot of money to transport them, it costs a lot of money to refine them. So a system like that lends itself to a few big monopolistic players. That's yeah. often why um, they like nuclear, because nuclear is structured very similarly. And so you can have the same kind of corporatist corruption that fossil fuels lends itself to. The hope with renewables is that we could have energy democracy and we could have, you know, much more, uh, much more public ownership, much more nonprofit ownership. Um, and, you know, your customers are your competitors because you're generating power off your rooftop. So obviously they don't like that. Oh, of course. I was just going to, yeah, as, as I was just going to say, I went to like, I was in the middle of Joshua tree and there was like, I was in some, you know, yurt as you do. And there was a guy and he was like, he, you know, he was renting the place. He was this Italian guy and he was, he was very, he was had like it three, your dad. He was not my dad. No. Um, anyway, he was this guy and whatever he said, he was my dad. No. Um, but he had a, they were in the middle of nowhere and they had a solar panel and I was like, Oh, that's amazing. So you generate your own energy. He was like, no, we can't, we have to connect to the grid. We're not allowed to cr just create and use our own energy without connecting to the grid. We have to pay PG&E at some point. You know, we have to like do the yeah. whole rigmarole to get like a write off to get the, 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 the like, yeah. I don't I'm not fully up on the solar panel thing, but that just seemed very ridiculous to me in yeah. sort of an example of what you're saying. Nevada you know, is another place that where they've waged war on on, on this kind of on decentralized. So, so my, I mean, th th that to me, that raises like uh, I wanted to ask your thoughts about sort of what the, the, the uh, strategy question that um you know, yesterday the House passed the stimulus bill, including a $15 minimum wage. And we're now, you know, almost a decade into the fight for 15. And there was like a pretty conscious strategy of going through local and state governments to pass $15 an hour minimum wage and sort of push it up to the federal level. And um, what are your thoughts about like the sort of relative priority around, you know, climate change and the Green New Deal of sort of focusing all energies on a on a national fight um, as opposed to sort of like, you know, the the there there are local pieces mm -hmm. that could be done. Like we could think about a local Green New Deal, but it also gets like super small and technical really fast about like mm -hmm. we need to build bike lanes in this town. And that seems like both helpful and also nowhere close to big enough. Um, yeah. Yeah. So how, how do you think about those kinds of strategic questions? So I think I think we need to be doing it all. Um, and I think, I, think one, I was one afraid of, you were going to say that <laughs> one of the reasons, one of the things we need to learn from the original new deal, and there's many warnings and lessons to learn from, from the exclusions, from the, from the systemic discrimination. Um, um, but also from the centralization, I, you know, I think that we, what we need is, I think from a federal government is very clear targets. We need to, we, we need to set our carbon budget. Um, and we need to stay within it. We need to audit ourselves if we're serious about actually preventing truly catastrophic levels of climate change. We can't just set a bunch of targets and just hope for the best. Yeah. We, we need systems to keep ourselves honest. But I think wherever possible within those targets, we need to decentralize power to, uh, to not just to the state and, and, and city levels, you know, but to tribes, uh, to frontline communities. You know, we need, we need you know, I think that, that, that there's some good examples to learn from, from Germany and the way that they structured some of their rollout of renewables, where they had, for instance, 900 energy cooperatives, renewable energy cooperatives. Wow. Um, so, um, you know, just because it lends, renewables lend themselves to decentralization doesn't mean it necessarily will be decentralized unless we structure policy in order to encourage that. Um, right. But Which is said, runs yeah. in the face of, I mean, sorry, just to say like the, the, so much about renewables. It's like, well, there's so much money in it. So if you can just get the venture capitalists interested in renewables and it's like, no, 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 that's not what yeah. we need, actually. Yeah. No. Um, 
it's just too important and we need to move too quickly for us to just gamble with market solutions. That doesn't mean there's no role for markets whatsoever, but it does mean that they are not the engine of this. We're not leaving it to them. Um, but I think it, 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 the big issue around, you know, do we, do we push at the state level or are we pushing more at the national level is just money. You know, um, this is expensive. It is a tr it's trillions of dollars and it's only the federal government that's going to be able to liberate that kind of capital. Right. Yeah. Especially, and this is where things are. Um, this is where things are um, more difficult in the context of COVID is that so many States are in their own financial crises. Right. Now we, right. there, 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 there is finally funding going to States. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is all of it. Does that make sense? Oh, and I think yeah, you look I mean, skeptical, NATO. No, obviously the answer is Bitcoin. <laughs> oh, so, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. I, see. I figured That's it out. That's what you were gearing up for. Yeah, okay, I'm too I'm close like, to Silicon Valley. Uh, All we everything. need is some clever Bitcoin. You know what? They're doing such a great job in Puerto Rico right now that obviously we should just let them do their. Anyway, oh that was no! A joke. That was is a joke. that happening? Oh yeah, that's what happened after Maria. Is like. All they called them, they called themselves Puertopians, and they went to Puertopia to go start their Bitcoin utopia and take advantage of all of the tax breaks. Um, and yeah, oh God, it's it's horrific. That's yeah. disgusting. Well, Cri so crypto colonialism, they call it in Puerto Rico. Have you become a patron yet? Patreon.com slash bituation room is where you can directly support this show and help me make it sustainable so that I can do more of what I do best doing this.